Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Global Online Ministry Alliance. And this is my 10 a.m. slot, Mountain Standard Time. So come join me every Sunday. Uh, we just got done listening to the fabulous Lynn Bennett at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Kyle Butler at 10 a.m. Central Time, and then I'm here 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And then after that, we have 11 a.m. Mountain uh, Standard Time with Derek Day. So, um, whoa, what a lineup for you. Oh, my goodness. If you don't come off of these mornings uh, invigorated for your week, and then you can go back in the middle of your week and just get refreshed uh, because we post these on the, uh, on the site now, um, I have something today. Hi, Haran. Um, I have something today that is so powerful and Jesus anointed and crazy, too good to be true, but it is true, um, that I have for you. I was sitting with the Lord last night and doing, a, doing some study. And my husband was like, okay, I'm going to bed. And I'm like, I'm not. I got, this is so good. I can't stop. It's kind of like when you taste something that tastes so good and something else may be pulling at you like bedtime and fatigue. Okay. <laughs> um, and you keep on partaking because it's that good, right? Oh my goodness. Okay. And literally like I did finally go to bed. But I literally was in bed shaking under the anointing. I'm like, wow, I wonder if I'm jiggling the bed. So um, hallelujah, right? God is just as good. And I do believe this is going to be a multiple parter because it is, there, it is so rich. We're talking about the gospel, the true gospel. And many times, you know, we have felt, hi Kyle, we have felt that we get the gospel, right? How many of you learned the gospel um, as one thing, and then it wasn't really that exciting? Wasn't really, it was kind of like, well, Jesus died on the cross for me. Yes, check. Um, and now I got to go off and do a bunch of stuff, <laughs> which is not the gospel, okay? Jesus did his part. Now I've got to do my part, okay? This is not good news, and that's what the gospel is. It's good news. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to be talking about oneness with God. We're going to be talking about living uh, in the promises of the true gospel. How many of you have heard some promises uh, in, right, in your Christian rock? Hi, Donna, Donna Ray. Um, how many of you have heard some promises? How many of you are like maybe a little frustrated that the promises haven't manifested? Any, any takers? <laughs> Listen, are we all there yet doing the works that Jesus did in greater works? And I'm not just talking about, hi, Melinda, the supernatural healing, raising from the dead, all of that. Yes, and it's all of that, but it's not limited to that, right? Um, it is so powerful. Oh my goodness, I might just get happy. Seriously, last night, I was studying this stuff and I couldn't stop studying. And I was thinking, I'm being such a glutton for Jesus. And I'm being so drunk. I was getting drunk in the spirit. And you know what? There's one place where it is not only uh, not a sin, but a really good idea to be a drunkard and a glutton. You want to know where that is? That's when you're feasting on what Jesus Christ provided. The word of God says, uh, do not be drunk with wine, but be ever filled. And the Amplified says, and, and stimulated and stimulated with the Holy Ghost, okay? And so, right, so this is a place, because, you know, uh, gluttony and, and drunkenness are actually sins, but not when you're drunk and a glutton on um, God's Word, on His Spirit, on His presence, oh my goodness, on encountering God. And I literally, honestly, it just bowls me over. So if I get, if I get some funky little manifestations, just because God is like coming, then you will just have to forgive me. I don't mind. You know, it's so funny. I was, I was talking to God about it. And I was thinking, I am being really strange. You know what I mean? Like sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes and there's some undignified things that don't necessarily make you look good. And not everybody manifests the same way when the Holy Spirit is manifesting. Okay. But I tend to be pretty demonstrative. And this used to be kind of a source of amusement 
for my uh, compadres because I'd be the one on the floor underneath the table because the presence was so heavy. Everyone else was having a good time and I couldn't hold it together. <laughs> so I'm just, this is just a warning, but I'm saying with it, oh my God, do I, I really don't care because wow, I might get more undignified with this. David, I'm giving you a high five in the spirit, okay? Why the dude was so enthralled with the presence of God that he was dancing off his underwear, right? And he could care less and he was gonna get more dignified so you might just have to get happy oh my goodness how many of you want to be dignified or do you want to be happy and overflowing and releasing the presence of God and manifesting the promises of God oh my goodness we want to glorify God we don't want to have to kind of look cute all the time right okay just thought I'd, that would be my warning okay so let's talk about this we're going to talk about union Oh my God, I can't stand it. Human with God, oneness with God. This, I'll just cut to the chase. The highlight is this is how you manifest all the promises, all the fullnesses, all the fullnesses of God. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. Okay, and I'm not gonna do before the foundation of the world, but I will allude to it. But let's go back into the beginning of humankind. Yes, Donna Ray, you be happy, girl, right? Absolutely. Okay, so here's Adam and Eve, and they're made in the image and likeness of God, right? And they are one with God, they're walking with God, right? They have no, um, it's not on their radar screen anything having to do with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil except not to eat of it okay so they are partaking their one they're flourishing they've been given dominion over everything but one another okay they are they are expanding the garden they are tending the garden they are happy campers they are naked but covered with the glory they are it's happy time right okay so there they are perfect people and how do you tempt perfect people? Just a good question. And this is a question I'll give Andrew Walmart credit for this because he raised this question. It's really good. Well, what you do is you tempt them to believe that they're not perfect. Okay, so what did the serpent do? He said, um, verse uh, uh, 4 in Genesis 3, it says, The serpent said to the woman, okay, and this is after when Adam, where Eve said, you know what, if we eat the fruit, we'll die, right? He said, you surely will not die. Okay, lie, lie. Okay, for God knows um, that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Okay, so how do you tempt a perfect person? You tempt them to believe that they're not like God, that they're separate from God. Separation is the master lie. It is the thing in our minds and our hearts that in one way or the other is undermining us, manifesting the promises because either we're not operating in our authority, we don't know how to do that, we don't know how to rest, we don't know how to believe, we can't believe because somewhere we feel like we're separate. Somehow that the, that, that, that the, that the seen realm is so big and so huge, we feel separate from God. Let me tell you, the seen realm is constantly coming in your eye gates, your ear gates, your physical gates, your book account, your bank account, and your book account, and whatever else is not looking like heaven, and try to tell you that it's off in the future. You know what? Um, the, the, the lie of separation is totally what's, what's driving religion. Oh my goodness, what is driving sin? What is driving the spirit of religion? You're separate. You got to do something to, to, to be better, to do better. You got to do something. It's all, it's on you, not on Jesus, right? Okay, so you feel condemned. You feel heavy. You feel separated. You feel isolated. You feel abandoned. Let me go on in that verse. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight for the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise. Okay, let me just say this. Knowledge of good and evil, was that wisdom? No, it was not wisdom. It was fallen wisdom. It was so-called natural wisdom, okay? They were not supposed to eat of that because the only thing they were supposed to know about was this relationship and intimacy with God 
and that allowing them to do everything they were called to do. Okay, yes. Okay, all right. So, okay, she took from its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband because if she was going down, he was going down too. Thank you, Eve. Okay, <laughs> okay. And then thank you, Adam, for being such an idiot. Okay, right? Just saying. All right, okay. And he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open. What were the eyes open to? They were open to this lie of separation. Oh my goodness, they're open to a reality that the enemy of their souls was experiencing, which really was separation, but God never, ever intended this for his sons and daughters. Um, they knew that they were naked. What happens when you feel separate from God? You feel naked, right? And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves themselves uh, loin coverings. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got a funny visual. Okay. So, all right. Here's Adam and Eve. So what happens when you feel you're separate from God? What happens with that? You feel naked. You feel ashamed. You feel you have to hide. You have to cover up. I mean, so what, what was wrong with their private parts that needed to be covered up? They were made, right? I'm just saying, by God. Okay. And then they had to hide, hide. Okay, then here comes God, and he's like, hang out time. Yes, one with my uh, beloved kids, and they're hiding. Now, he didn't ask them, where are you? Because he didn't know where they were. He asked them, where are you? Because he was wanting to bring to their mind to help them locate where they were and try to draw them into repentance, right? Metanoia, transformed by the renewing of their mind, right? And, you know, then they start pointing fingers. And I mean, it's just, oh my gosh, so pathetic. And let me just say, we've all been there, okay? <laughs> we were born into that uh, fallen, uh, inferior reality, okay? Okay, all right, but let's just think for a second. Now, here is God, Trinity, Trinity, Father, God, and Holy Spirit in this relationship before the, this, this, this always existed relationship, before the foundation of the world, before he created all that in this other giving, sacrificial love. And he's like, I, we have, he's like, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are like so much love. Oh my goodness, we have to spill out. Like what happens when you love, you spill out, you want sons and daughters. That's what happens e either physically, spiritually, or both. So much, gotta give. Mm. Created human race. Knew that we were going to be idiots, okay? Right? Okay, now this wasn't because God is a sadist and he says, well, I'm gonna like do, that. right? So it creates them, but before all that happens, He's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. You know that 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 salvation message, the work of the cross was already in motion before the before there was a problem, before there was a fall and then when Jesus came in the flesh, it was walked out in the flesh. So there was no jot or tittle that was not taken care of how masterful is God. Right? Okay. All right. Sorry. Just got to keep on going. Okay, so there we go. And so what happened on that cross? It means it means that we were always in Christ, one with Christ. It was before the foundation of the world, dying for the sins of the entire world. Just saying, always in Christ does not mean all dogs go to heaven, but but there's an opportunity for everyone to wake up to that position of union. Okay, so what happens? So and you may say, well, then why? You know, why did God boot them out of the garden, right? Isn't that, that's a good question, right? When I was when I was a little girl, and I I was I would sneak read the Bible because that was looked down upon in my family. I would sneak read the Bible, and they had these pictures. It was a children's Bible, illustrated, and they had this beautiful garden. And then Adam and Eve fell and had all this thunder and lightning, and God was mad and He was booting them out, right? You know what? I mean? You disobeyed. We're going to boot you out of the Garden of Eden. Well, why did God do that? Was He mad? What is God's true nature? Okay, He's love. Okay, so let me ask you, if you had a parent who represents love to you and you disobey them, 
okay? Do they boot you out of the house? Because they're mad? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not easily offended. It does not delight in evil. Rejoice in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always perseveres. Love never fails. That's who God's nature is. No, he was not ticked. Now, he was ticked at sin. Sin entered and molested his kids. Bad idea. But his kids, what did he do? He, sacri he said, he didn't say, he didn't pronounce curses on them to punish them. He said, because you did this, this is what's going to happen. Well, you know what? If, um, someone, if, I, if someone tells me, Catherine, if you put your hand on the burner, you're going to get burned. It doesn't mean they're empowering the burning of my hand. It means they're telling me, wow, there's consequences to stupid. Okay? <laughs> and so this is what he said. This is what you're in for. Let me help you, though. Okay? So what did he do? He sacrificed animals. This is the first death that was ever, ever to hit anywhere, ever. Okay? Thank you, poor little animals. Sacrificed the animals. Clothed his kids. Right? Because they thought they were separate now. Okay? Clothed his kids. And then told them you can't go in the garden, booted them out. Why? Because he did not want his kids to eat from the tree of life forever and be in that fallen state forever. Because I have a salvation plan as God and I'm going to work that puppy out and I'm going to do it through my kids. Because ultimately, keep in mind, Adam and Eve were going to bear Jesus eventually. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so let me just say this because this is so good. So the first Adam, oh, what a disaster. Okay, right? Okay, everybody agrees. Okay, the second Adam, Jesus. Okay, now this is what happens because, because honestly, sin is rubbed in our nose and the fallenness of the world is rubbed in our nose all the time. We are just well acquainted with how powerful that is, right? We are acquainted, not, not in reality, but in our, our temporal fallen reality. We're born into that and we're raised up in it. And people are so operating in fear, right? That basically to protect their kids, they basically give you a bunch of fear, either because they're afraid or because they think fear is a good thing to help keep you from getting hurt. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> okay. So that's that. So we got it, our nose rubbed in it, but then there's Jesus. Okay. He is, what does the Bible call him? The second Adam. So let me just ask you, I love this question. Okay. You ready? Okay. So the second Adam, how did the first Adam do a better job at falling than the second Adam at redeeming. Oh, I'm just saying, let's be very clear. We are, we are like, we have no problem saying that everybody's born in sin and we're all going to hell if we don't do, jump through some hoops. And that's what we're taught the gospel is. No. Okay. I'm, let me just give you a clue. No, that's not the gospel. Okay. Let, let, let's, let's get this straight. So then there's, there's Jesus, the second Adam. So I'm saying the first Adam did not do a more sweeping job than the second Adam, because the second Adam had already taken care of it before the first Adam ever screwed up, okay? And then there's the second Adam walking, on, walking as the son of man, knowing he was one with God. There's the oneness. Ooh, I love it. Um, and, and walking it out on terra firma. And guess what? We weren't around for any of it. I mean, on terra firma right? Hi, Christina. You weren't around. I wasn't around uh, during the fall, and I wasn't around, and you weren't around um, uh, in, in terra firma, in our bodily form, uh, when Jesus Christ went to the cross. So I'm saying the second Adam doing his masterful work of redeeming the entire race. Now, the entire race, human race, does not need to participate. They can choose not to. Listen, you can use your free will to serve Satan and you will go to hell. I'm just saying. So I'm just be very clear that this is not, but I'm not preaching sin here. But I, 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 the only reason I say that is because people accuse me of being a universalist. And I'm, I'm universal in terms of his love, his invitation. But in terms of all dogs going to heaven, I am not a universalist. Let me just help you with that. So we don't have a stupid debate because I don't want to do that. It's like, oh, what a waste of time. All right. 
Okay, all right, so there's a second Adam who did this sweeping work, inviting, reconciling, oh my God, it says in Colossians over and over and over and over, all things, all things, all things. He reconciled the dog bowl back to himself. He reconciled everyone back to himself, whether they awaken to it, whether they participate, different issue, but he's drawing all things to himself. Okay, so master lie, it's the lie of separation. Okay. All right. Okay. And you know, this is what happens. We think the gospel is, wow, I realized I was a sinner and I needed a savior. And so I repented of my sins and received Jesus as savior. And now I'm saved. And before that I wasn't saved. And, um, and now I'm saved and that's what it is. And the thing is a, a sinner's prayer is not necessarily what saves you. It's the awakening to what Jesus did on the cross. Hey, listen, if you're mute and you can't say a sinner's prayer, if you're in a coma, but you're encountering God, because let's, let's be clear, you're a spirit being. So you can be in a coma, your brain is totally not online, but your spirit man is alive, engaging with God and awakening. All this is awakened and you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are saved. So I'm just saying, let's be very clear what that is, but let's not be weird about it. We get weird about it, okay? And I'm just saying, and this is not to dishonor the people that have come before us. You only know what you have, but let's face it. We are growing, not in something new, but awakening to something that already was there. And if you go to scripture, and I'm going to take you to scripture, oh my goodness, we are going to have such a good time uh, awakening to this union thing. We, you are going to spread it on toast. You're going to eat it for breakfast. You're going to stick it under your armpits. You're going to bathe in it. You're going to do all roll around on the ground with it. It will be so good because this is what you were made for. This is the longing of your heart. You know, every human being on the planet longs for home. This is home. This is you in Christ, one with him. The answer was already there before you started. You were you were in Christ before you were ever found in Adam, okay? And I'm helping you. Holy Ghost is helping you. I thank you, Father, for doing this. This is not just me about, oh, Jesus, thank you. He's so happy right now. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Um, so uh, so this is awakening to what we have. And as we awaken to what we have, we're able to manifest everything that goes along with it, right? We're able to manifest everything that goes along with it. Okay. So let, let's start with some scripture because I said a whole lot of stuff. First John six seventeen. I'm just uh, uh, jumping to the, to the to the to the gist of the matter. I'm reading this from the NIV, and then pretty much everything else from there. I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation because it really brings us, oh my goodness, out. If you don't have it, you'll want to get it. Okay, this brings us out so well. So First Corinthians six seventeen NIV. But whoever, okay, so. Who, who does that include? That means everybody has the opportunity. Whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. One with him. Bring, bring out this oneness, okay? So I'm just saying you're united. You are one with him, okay? All right, all right, okay. So now let me just say this. Jesus, when he was uh, preaching in the gospels and things, didn't bring this out a ton. Why? Because the finished work of the cross hadn't happened already on terra firma. Let me get this hair out of my way because it's bugging me. Um, so it hadn't happened on terra firma, okay? So usually when Jesus was talking, the red letters of Jesus, um, he's talking about to, a, to people under the law. And so if you're addressing someone under the law, you're going to speak law language, Okay, because he hadn't gone to terra firma, he hadn't fulfilled all the all the things on terra firma on on the earth realm. Okay, so he was speaking to people under the law. So it doesn't come out as much, but it's still there. But we're gonna go to the epistles of Paul. Why the Pauline epistles? Because he was the one that had this revelation of union, and oh my God, he just pounds it, 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 pounds it. and we're gonna do some of that fun, happy, not at you pounding, but oh my God, helping you get in it, helping you soak in it, helping you get it so much into your being. That's your default way of thinking. And you can be transformed by the renewing of your minds and you can pop out those promises as fruit. Okay. Because the root is right there. You're one, you're connected. Okay. Let me, um, I'm going to skip down for a second because I just made a, a promise here and I, and I want to bring this out um, at, even before we start. I have a lot of scripture here. Okay. 
Um, so this is how we bear fruit and do his commands. Remember, you have one commandment under the new covenant. It's the commandment to love. And I'm going to have to watch my time. Oh my gosh, I've already gone 25 minutes. Okay, this is definitely going to be a multi-parter. Okay, so how do we bear fruit and do his one command of love, which is to love, not just to love. This is just not a garden variety love. Okay, this is to love as he loves. That's impossible except apart from God, right? That's impossible except... Uh, when it's impossible when we're operating apart from God, but when, as we're operating as one with him, we can love not just as the world loves, but as he loves. Okay, so let's go to John 15, uh, the Passion Translations. Okay, so this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. I am the, a true sprouting vine. And the farmer who tends the vine is my father. So this is a father-son operation, right? Holy Ghost is right in the middle of it because the Trinity is never split. Um, if you have any questions about why Jesus said, my God, my God, why are you forsaking me? You need to watch my last video, but I'm not going to go there because I want to keep on track. Verse 2, he cares for the branches connected to me. Father God is caring for you as a branch connected to Jesus by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches. How many of you learned that when, if you didn't bear fruit as a branch, you were just booted off and destroyed, right? No, that's not what this, that's, that's a crappy translation. By lifting up and, where well, I'm missing my spot here, and da, 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 by lifting, by lifting and propping up. He's your lifter up and your propper up when you have not borne fruit. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't give up on you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Okay. So, okay. Um, and he, he does this by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches. That's for those of you who maybe have not been very fruitful. Okay. No condemnation, Christ Jesus. Let God lift you up and prop you up and you will bear fruit. Okay. And it says, and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. That's probably most of, most of you. You've been very fruitful and sometimes God, God prunes to yield a greater harvest. This is not nasty. This is, this is us being conformed to the image of Christ. This is maybe getting rid of some mindsets or things that we're doing. Maybe we're spending too much time watching TV. I don't know what our deal is. And we're not bearing fruit, okay? And he's had, to, uh, I've had a lot of pruning, just so you know. <laughs> and I, baby, I embrace it. It's good stuff. Okay, now this is Jesus. The words I've spoken over you have already cleansed you. Now this is, he's speaking to his disciples pre-cross. Isn't that amazing? They were already cleansed already cleansed. You are already clean. You're not trying to get clean. You are already clean. Okay. Um, for as, um, so you must remain in life union with me for I remain in life union with you. So Jesus always said, I'm, I'm in life. I'm still in life union. Yeah. I know you've watched that porn, but I am still in life union with you. Yeah. I know you had an abortion. Yeah. I'm still in life union with you. Yeah. I know you did such and such and such. And so, um, you gossip. Yes. I'm still in life union with you. Maybe you slept around and I'm not trying to be crude, but I'm just saying if it doesn't apply here, it doesn't apply anywhere. If it doesn't apply to us in our darkest, stinkiest moments, it applies nowhere. Okay. And so he's still in life union with you, even though you're not receiving from him, right? It's like, no, no, I'm too sinful or whatever we're doing, or I'm too distracted or I'm too whatever. Okay. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit. So your life will be fruitless. Now you can bear a lot of fruit of the flesh in the nasty meaning of the flesh. Okay. Apart from him. Pretty much a lot of times the people I know that are saved and they're not going to hell, but you know, they have say a double life and they turn away from God to do such and such and such. And so they literally say, I have to disconnect myself from God in order to do this. Okay. They have to do this flip in their minds. Remember God is the enemy of no one except the devil and death and sin, right? All those things of the, and sickness and disease and poverty and all those things that molest his kids. Okay. He's the enemy of that, but he's not the enemy of his kids, right? He's reconciled himself to them. And in order to 
be an enemy of God, you can't make him your enemy. But what you can do is make yourself his enemy and that in your mind because you love wicked deeds. That's what the word of God says. But he's never your enemy. He's not a, the Satanist enemy, okay? <laughs> Satan's enemy for sure. Um, so I just want to bring that particular thing out here. I lost my place, so let me pull that back up. This is so good. Okay, so... Uh, so unless you live, for as, as a branch severed from, from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. How do we pop out the promises? I am just saying, it comes from the place of intimacy. Listen, where are a husband and wife fruitful? In the place of intimacy. And remember, the Lord said that, that the husband-wife relationship and that coming together was a, a foreshadowing, was a, 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 um, a, a pointing to the relationship to God. Paul said this was the mystery. And so that what happens when the husband-wife come together just in the natural they bear kids. They are fruitful. There's automatic fruitfulness unless something's wrong. Okay. And listen, if, 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 if you are in the place where you are one with God, but you're not fruitful, something is wrong because you should be bearing fruit. That's not a condemnation thing. That's not something for you to do. So you bear fruit. It is a place of, wow, I got disconnected somehow in my mind from the one I'm one with. Maybe I got an unbelief. Maybe I got an offense. Maybe there's a sin that d disconnected me in my mind to God that said he would never leave me or forsake me. Right? Okay, so I am the sprouting van and you're the uh, vine and you're the branches. And as you live in union with me as your source, see, God is the source. Fruitfulness will stream from within you. How many of you want fruitfulness streaming from within you? Absolutely. But when you live separate from me, how do you live separate from God? He's everywhere. It's in your minds. That's what an unbeliever is. They live separate from God in their minds. Either they don't know or they rebel against it or something. Well, you know what? In the places where we feel separate, we don't know. Or maybe we're rebelling against it. Okay. Doesn't mean we're going to hell. It just means in that place. Say you're an amazing person, but you have this one sin habit. Okay. Uh, you know, you're smoking something. You shouldn't be smoking or something. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. Okay. But in that place, you separate yourself. Now, I'm saying in that sin, invite God into that place of sin because he's the only one that can help you, righteousness of God. Uh, that's a different thing, but it will, that will preach right there. Okay, uh, but if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, how does the words of, uh, of, of Christ live powerfully within you? Number one, you got to know them. This is why it's probably important to crack open your Bible every now and then. Just saying, uh, this is not to earn brownie points. This is so he can feed you. Okay, he can feed you. And a lot of times I find, honestly, if you will meditate on one section or one verse rather than checking it off your list, I read my six chapters a day. Okay. All right. It's a, not a list check. It's a, wow, I need to feed. I need to partake. Okay. Right. And um, if they live powerfully within you, then you can ask, oh my goodness, what does this say? Whatever you desire and it will be done. How many know this is a dangerous verse? <laughs> There's Jesus saying, ask whatever you desire. Well, let me say this. If you are living in life union with him and his words are living powerfully within you, you're not gonna, you won't have a desire to rob a bank and get away with it. You won't have a desire to cheat on your spouse and get away with it. You won't have a desire not to pay your taxes and get away with it. I'm saying you will have his heart. You will have a heart of love and it will look like love, okay? That's why this is safe for the Trinity to promise you, okay? He's amazing how he can change his desires. Listen, when I didn't know God very well, my desires were really different from my desires now. And the truth is, since he's changed your heart, he's written his law on your hearts. You can trust your desires when you're an intimate. You can trust. We get so like, oh my God, okay, God, is it your will? It's like, oh my God, you just want it. Like, you know, I want a new house. Is it your will, God? And I'm just saying, if 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 you're into, if you're a, an cultivating an intimate relationship with God, okay what you desire is just a good thing, okay? When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature 
disciples, okay, who glorify my Father. Fruitfulness glorifies Father God, okay? Maturity in us as, well, how do we mature? Well, listen, how does a baby mature? They get fed, and they get fed, and they get fed, and they stick close to their parents, and then they do some stuff, and they grow, they do different stuff, but they stick close to the ones that provide, and then they, they wean off that, and then they wean off, right? So in this place where, honestly, you're constantly getting fed, you will mature, you will mature in Christ. Okay, all right. Now this, I love this, I love this, I love this so much, is in the context of my personal favorite topic, and this is the topic, uh, well, I've got many topics, but the one that God really get, brings me back to over and over again, and that is the topic of love. Yes. Okay, context, verse nine. I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. That he, God loves you, with the same love that the Father loves Jesus. You don't get a, well, you get an inferior love. You know, you don't have a right to vote for yourself as not being valuable when you're that loved. You, you forfeit that right, just saying, okay? That may be a correction for somebody. Love that. We all need to be corrected. You must let my love nourish your hearts. You must, sorry, continually. How do we get nourished? We need to continually abide and let that love nurture us. Let my love continually nurture your hearts, nourish your hearts. Hi, Albie. Hi, James. Um, so, okay. Um, for I am continue, I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. This is Jesus operating as a son of man, getting ready to go to that cross. Okay, how did he deal? Oh my God, with the annoying people. <laughs> okay, how did he deal with sinners? How did he deal with the religious, um, condemning, mean people, right? Right, that were making their sons and daughters uh, as much a son and daughter of hell than they were. Boy, a harsh word, right? Okay, right? Okay, so this is what he did, okay? He says, um, um, for I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. If you want to do the works that Jesus did, that means, you know, works that Jesus did, you know what? Provision, that means wholeness. That means everything that God promises you as a son and daughter, this is how he did it, Right? living continually nourished and empowered by his love. For my purpose, telling you these things is that the joy that I experience, how, how many of you want more joy? Hallelujah. The joy that he experienced, uh, I'm missing my spot, sorry, um, will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. Oh my goodness, do we need overflowing gladness? How many of you got got dep have been depressed or maybe you are depressed? Hi Wendy. Um you need overflowing gladness. How does that look like? Well, you let the love of God continually uh, nourish your heart and empower you and that joy just overflows why it's a fruit of the spirit so if you're connected in the vine whoa these things are going to pop out you'll be surprised one of the funnest things as a believer is when you're doing this and practicing this and practicing uh, uh being awake to your union with christ as uh, stuff pops oh wow you know what someone was such a jerk and i didn't i didn't i didn't pop their head off right <laughs> right right you're, it, the fruit starts overflowing. Things start automatically happen when you're well fed. Woo! Stuff happens when you when you feed a tree, a vine, a great grapes go ping, 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 and they're not eh, trying to squeeze it out. Right? You're automatically be conformed to the image of Christ. Right? I need to check my time. Okay, because I have so much for you guys. This is going to be a multi-parter. You guys got to show up next week. I'm just saying. Okay, all right, verse 14. You show that, that you are my intimate friends. How many want to be intimate friends with Jesus? Okay, let me just say this. This is your position, but you show your position. Okay, so you don't, you don't um, do stuff to earn this. Don't make it backwards. This is just saying, yeah, because you're intimate and one with me, this happens. Not in order to get intimate with me, you need to do stuff. 
You never earn this. You never do something to get there from here. You awaken to the fact that you're already there, you enjoy it, and the fruit just keeps on popping. Okay, so you show that you are my intimate friends when you obey all that I commanded you. Now, I love this. So how many of you are expecting at this point to, be, to, to get a to-do list? to get the law list, right? Because Jesus at this point was still under the law. Just saying, the law did not die out until the temple was sacked and all the priesthood and all the vestments and even the records of who were the priestly lineage and all that kind of stuff uh, and the whole sacrificial system, the Jewish temple system was sacked. That's when the law ended, okay? The new covenant, that's when the old covenant ended and was completely obliterated and the period from when Jesus went to the cross and the new co covenant was established, at that point, the old covenant was dying out and they coincided until the temple and the sacrificial system was sacked, was obliterated. And then it's just the new covenant. And then the, 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 what's left yet are the mindsets that we have uh, in the old covenant. And that's what we're getting rid of. Hallelujah. We are detoxifying. Hi, Corey. Okay, let's keep on going. This is so good. Okay, you show you're my intimate friends when you obey all that I commanded you. So get ready for the commands. This is not burdensome. And, and he says, I have never called you servants. Okay. Do you realize they weren't his servants when they were even walking on terra firma? They were not, they were serving, but they weren't his servants, right? And how many of you feel like you're God's servant? Okay, I'm just saying, that is not new covenant scriptural. His disciples weren't even servants. They were serving, okay? Because a master doesn't confide in his servants, okay? So God is confiding in you as an intimate friend, right? And servants and servants don't always understand what the master is doing. God wants you to understand what he's doing. He wants you to understand what he's done. He wants to understand what he's doing to help that manifest, yes? Okay, but I call you my most intimate friends. Your most intimate friends, your besties, okay, right? For I reveal to you everything that I've heard from my father. Now get this, get this, get this. This is so good. Oh my goodness. You didn't choose me. You guys didn't choose God. I didn't choose God. No, but I've chosen and commissioned you to go into the world and bear fruit. You've been chosen and commissioned to go and bear fruit. You didn't choose God. You didn't say, do I want Buddha? Do I want, um, I don't know, give, give me something. Do I want some sort of new age thing? Um, do I want whatever, or do I want Jesus? Well, I mean, in your head, you may have done some flipping around, but God chose you before the foundation of the world. You just happen to awaken to that and say, oh, that works for me, right? Okay, yes, okay. Uh, and your fruit will last. We can do a lot of fruit of, this, of, of the flesh in the negative connotation of the flesh that ultimately will not last, but it can drag a whole lot of people down. But this is everlasting fruit. Remember, what is everlasting life? To know Father God and Jesus, right? That's what the, Jesus defined as everlasting life. It's not just getting your butt in heaven. Yes, I vote for that, but let's bring heaven here, okay, right? Um, and, and you've been commissioned to go into the world and your fruit will last because whatever you ask of my father for my sake, he will give it to you. So whatever you ask, now let me just ask you, what if you, oh my God, ask for something that seems pretty, oh, come on, you want a vacation? All right. All right. So are you asking that for Jesus' sake? Absolutely. He wants you rested. He wants you enjoying all his goodness. He wants you, right? You can ask these desires of your heart not to spend them and be selfish and whatever, but to enjoy. Hey, right. Do not trust in, in uncertain riches, but in the living God who richly gives us what? Hmm, let me think. Oh, wow. All things to enjoy. So not everything has to be a spirit. Sometimes we get so spiritually spooky spiritual. Okay. Right. We can be naturally supernatural. And we can enjoy this gorgeous planet. We can enjoy, maybe you want a new car. Maybe you just don't want a clunker that breaks down and say that your, need, your needs are met. Well, you know what? Maybe you just want to enjoy your ride. 
that is okay. Just make sure that you're one with God and that you're sharing his love. You're doing, you're not, you're not, you're not spending it just on yourself, but you're sharing. Just a side note, but I thought I would just bring it out because I could see people's brains going there and I wanted to nip that puppy in the bud. Okay, and your fruit will last because whatever you ask of my father for my sake. So Jesus' sake, okay, he wants you thriving. He wants you happy. You know, happy kids point to a happy God. It's, it glorifies God, right? Um, he will give it to you. So this is my parting command. Okay, so now we're back to the command. Everybody buckle up. Don't, I, I want you to understand he's not putting you back under the law. He hates the law. He, the law is righteous. In him, he fulfilled it. But what is, what is your law now? What is the royal law? What is your one command? Get this, love one another deeply. That's your command. Now, you're going to need supernatural help to do it, right? Because your one command is to love as Jesus loves, okay? And that is a fruit of your union of abiding in the vine. You're totally going to do that, puppy, but you're going to do it from the place of having received. So, of course, you're going to love. Listen, when you are so well-loved and you feel that from God, you're going to, the, 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 the things that block your eyes with people, you're going to fall in love with people. You won't help yourself but sharing it. That is just what it does. So, your one command, how do we bear fruit? Uh, and, and do the one command that he asks, which is to love one another as he loves. By this you'll know his disciples, we're his disciples. We abide. We are linked up. We enjoy our union with God. See, God doesn't disconnect from us when we sin, but we tend to. Or we get whatever. And I'm saying if you're getting crusty, like a, a, a vine that has a branch that has been um, disconnected. Well, just reconnect. What do I mean by that? Okay, practically, what does that look like? Well, how do you connect with God? Well, start engaging with him. So Jesus, wow, you know what? I've been like doing my own thing and maybe I've been stressed out and I'm just trying to work and I'm blah, 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 and I'm into toil and I'm not liking life and, you know, and I'm in fear and I'm battling off an illness and I'm, I'm battling off dead and my kids are rebelling and whatever the heck is going on and there's a lot of heck that can break loose, right? So how do you, how do you connect? Jesus, there you are. Oh my gosh, I forgot to look at you. I forgot to keep my eyes fixed on you, the author and finisher of my faith, that I can do nothing apart from you. The word of God says in John 15, same, same chapter, it says the uh, in different translations, it says, apart from me, you can do nothing, right? So, wow, so how do we get apart from God? Well, we forget. That's what we do. So what do we need to do? We are, tend to be forgetful creatures. That's part of the weakness of our frame. That's why we turn to him. That's why we, oh, Jesus, help me. Oh, there you are. Talk to God and listen. That's called prayer, by the way. And it doesn't have to look like your first hour in the morning. Some of you may just be so busy doing everything you can do to get enough rest and get your kids off to school. It is more, it cannot ask you to give the first hour of your morning. You give it, what, 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 so whatever, you connect with God while you're getting breakfast, while you're getting those kids off. And then, and then get some special time apart from him, just you and alone. Maybe uh, you need to spend some time basking on, in these words basking, receiving, partaking. That's how you reconnect functionally. Okay, so positionally, we're totally connected. There's nothing that can disconnect us, but functionally, we can forget. Maybe we got into a fence. Maybe we, we, we got tired. You know, the enemy always talks to tempt you when you're tired, when you're, um, when, you're, when you're stressed, when you're in fear. And then maybe you did something. Maybe you sinned. Maybe you're ashamed of that. Well, get that thing cleaned up. Forgive someone. Do whatever you need to do if there's overlay that you need to do to get cleaned up. So, wow. Okay, now, whoa, there you are. Ah, yes. Oh, my goodness. You've been there the whole time. Yes, you were there when I did that stinking thing. Yes, you did. And you still love me and still say I'm righteous. I just forgot. Forgive me for forgetting. Help me forgive myself. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> right? That's how you reconnect. And the spiritual disciplines, such as reading your Bible, such as praying, all those things. Sometimes you may need to, to, uh, you may need to fast, not because you're, you're getting brownie points with God, but because honestly, you need to say, body, you don't get to boss me around. I'm going to take lordship of you and I'm going to seek, seek aware, awakeness, awakening to God who's already there. Okay, so if God seems distant, you just forgot. You just need to be awakened. And that's what you do when you hang out, you talk with him. Listen, if you're having problems with that, I have so many resources for you. Oh my goodness, if you're having problems with that, let me just flash my book. Here we go. 
Ding, 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 ding. I didn't do this as a promo for my book, but I will totally promote it because it does this really well. Marked by Love on Amazon. If you haven't gotten it, please get it. Um, uh, I, I mean, obviously, it blesses me, but, but oh my goodness, it will help you connect to God. I, I have been just the part of the call of my life. Hi, Dan, um, is getting, helping people connect to God. And sometimes we forget as good believers, we forget. Sometimes he feels so distant. Sometimes our faith doesn't work. It's like, we're like, I couldn't believe myself out of a paper bag right now. Well, yeah, you know what? We need to, to reconnect ourselves functionally with God. And, and that book will totally help. For those of you who've read it, just tell someone about it because it will totally help. So that's on Amazon. If you wanted, I didn't do that as a promo for my book, but I'm saying uh, practically because I, I, I hate it when people say you should do this and don't give you a practical way to do it. How do you abide in the vine? How do you practice his presence? How do you, my God, I've got this huge decision I need to make and I'm so stressed out, I can't hear God. How do you hear God? Okay, right, right? I've got this huge sin or honestly, I'm in so much pain, I can't connect with God. So sometimes you need help. Oh my goodness. That's why he created number one, the helper who's always there to help you. But if you and the helper, uh, it's not breaking through, well then maybe you just need some help from a human flesh. That's why we have ministers. That's why we have fivefold ministers and that book will totally help you connect. I've got so much stuff in there. I can't like get it all in one message, but I, I, I want to give you something. Now, for those of you who are not quite sure or don't have any money or don't like me or something, um, <laughs> okay, um, uh, I'm when I share this, I'm going to include a link for a free chapter of it. Oh my goodness, it's called, mm, it's called The Object of God's Passion. That's you. That will totally jumpstart you. I believe that's chapter six in the book. And if you like that, you're going to love the book. I'm just saying, if you hate it, don't get the book because you won't like it. Um, but, um, but anyway, so that's how you reconnect. And we can talk about more of this. Listen, I have got, oh my God, so much stuff for you. Please, please, please join next week because we're going to do part two of One with God, Living in the Promises of the True Gospel. All I could do this week was get you set up. Oh my goodness. You've been so beautifully set up. We're going to have such a good time next time. But I have got um, Derek Day, who's going to be coming on in just a bit at um, at 11 Mountain Time. So right after me, and I don't want to, to, to tap into his time. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and sign off. Um, my goodness, um, get the download if you don't have it. And oh my goodness, why don't you just go for broke and get the book, uh, Marked by Love. It's on Amazon by Catherine Toon. There's some other Marked by Loves uh, on there. Some of them are godly and some of them are really not. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. I don't know why that was funny, but it just hit me. Um, but um, mine's the one by Catherine Toon, Unveiling the Substance of Your True Identity. Go get that. Um, it will totally help you guys. I want you to enjoy. But join me next week. It's totally free to join next week. I've got such good stuff from you. I can barely keep it in. I love you guys. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye-bye.